Hei hei, ég heiti Ása, verið velkomin á rásina mína lærum í íslensku. Verkefni dagsins eru lýsingarorð, meiri lýsingarorð eða að læra að aðeins um orðið lítill á íslensku. Lítill. First of all, I have already had a lot of lessons about adjectives. So, ideally, you should watch all of them. But if you think, uh, I don't care about adjectives this much, I'll just not use them instead. At least, at least watch the legur adjectives and the ones with the colors. I think this sort of covers mostly everything in a short way. But honestly, my worry is a little bit that you all think that I'm crazy because I'm doing so many lessons about adjectives and it seems maybe like I'm repeating myself over and over again. But there is a reason for this and I don't want to scare you. I say right before telling you something super scary. But if you look up... Okay, so first of all, there's a website. I'll put the link in the description. Website where you can look up how is the different versions of each word, meaning if you want the different cases of for the nouns, for the adjectives, and all the different uh, uh, tenses of the verbs, etc. So you can just put in the word and then you will find all the different grammatical forms. And the thing is that if you put in an adjective, you get 120 forms. So I didn't mean to scare you, but it sounds a little bit scary. So it's like two, 120 forms of each adjective and not all the adjectives are the same. But in reality, it's not that bad. It's pretty bad, but it's not that bad because many of them are super simple. Let's say super, super simple where you can le learn them from all the adjectives in a couple of hours. But some of them are not so simple, but let's say you only really need to learn like 20, 30 hard ones and the rest are easy, something like this. So far, I've only been teaching you like six forms out of 120. Okay, fine, but it's six forms and I've already had like 10 episodes to do it. But this is because this is the most difficult part. So what I'm teaching you now is really the hard part and my hope is that if you learn these six, let's say these six versions really well for all the groups of the adjectives, then the rest will come a lot easier. So just as a, just as a reminder, the legur adjectives are really wonderful because they are all the same, more or less, and they are completely irregular. So for example, if you have the word donalur, donalur, which means root, can be any lower adjective, it doesn't really matter. Then do you remember how to say it in the different uh, different genders and in the plural and the singular? Now I will ask you to say it all the way through and then I will give you the solution. Try, say it out loud, write it down, pause, take your time, anything that you need. And it's always better to try and get it wrong than not try at all because trying and getting it wrong is how we learn. So now you fill in, we say han er, hún er, það er, or the same, same as það er, han er. Okay, and now the plural, then we say þeir eru, þær eru, or thy er. Okay, did you get it all? Was it easy? I hope it was easy. In any case, I will read it through. Okay, we say, Han, you can read with me. Han er donaleur. Han er donaleur. Hún er donaleg. Hún er donaleg. Það or haun er donalegt. Donalegt, þeir eru donalegir, þær eru donalegar og þau eru donaleg. Ok, but now we deal with the situation. In all of the words that I've talked about so far, 
the adjective have, has always ended with an R. It has always ended with an R in the dictionary form or in the male form. Always ended with an R. So the dictionary form is always the male form. However, not Iceland, all Icelandic adjectives end with an R. Even though I've pretended that they do for simplicity, but they don't. So a lot of words end with a double uh, consonant. And this is what will be the main focus of today. We will start by the main word of this lesson, which is small or lítill in Icelandic. Small or lítill in Icelandic. The problem with this word is that it's irregular. Okay, it's a little bit similar to how other words with double consonant at the ending go, but it's not exactly the same. I'm sorry, but this word you will just have to learn uh, by heart, specifically for this word, because there's no way around it, and it's a super important word, so you need to know it. Okay, so now I teach you uh, easy peasy. First of all, the dictionary word is lítill, lítill, okay, lítill, and then what happens and this is not an irregularity, this is normal for a word that happens uh, and with double N, is that in the female form, one of the last two letters is dropped. Okay, one of the last two letters is dropped. So we say, han er lítill, hún er lítill, and then, so lítill is technically the what is it called, the technically the, the root of the word, but then in the third person the L turns into ef. okay? I don't have an explanation for this, uh, this is, yes, it is what it is, so the L turns into ef. so in the singular person you say hann er lítill, hún er lítill, og það er lítill, okay? Er lítil. Hún er lítil, hann er lítil. And notice that this also, of course, applies to words uh, that are made from lítil. Okay, a very, very common word in Icelandic is svolítil. Okay, svolítil. And it means a little bit of, a little bit of, or like svolítil. And then the everything works in the same way okay then you can say han er svo lítill kjána strákur han er svo lítill kjána strákur then you say hún er svo lítill kjána stelpa hún er svo lítill kjána stelpa and finally hún er svo lítill kjána stálp hún er svo lítill kjána stálp okay so svo lítill, svo lítill og svo lítill. And notice that svo lítill is the a neutral form and this is the form that is used the most out of, for, for this word because it, we use it for situation in a similar way but we use it for an, as an adverb as well. So we use it in like þetta er svo lítið skrítið, þetta er svo lítið skemmtilegt. When we describe uh, actions, when we describe adjectives, then we new, use this uh, neutral form. So you will hear svolitith, by far the most of all of these version, and it's used so much that the colloquial pronunciation becomes soltith. Okay, svolitith, when we say it fast, it's soltith. So soltith is the same word as svolitith, Solte is just a very colloquial pronunciation. So news reporters would never say it like this, but but let's say most people, when you're talking colloquially, you would say uh, solte, unless you're really maybe talking to an elderly person or you really try, or a foreigner, then you would might be try to enunciate. But normally, I, for example, always say solte. Okay, solte. Okay. And then we can just continue. The same is, for example, for the word pinulitil. Pinulitil, which means uh, like really, really small, like tiny, tiny, tiny. 
pínu lítill, means like tiny small, like tiny small. And then we say, uh, þetta er pínu lítill strákur. Þetta er pínu lítill strákur. Bara, whoop. Maybe just one years old, or half a years old. Bara pínu lítill strákur. And in the same way, you would say, and now you finish, hún er stelpa. Hún er stelpa. I'll give you, hún er pínu lítill stelpa. Hún er pínu lítil stelpa. And finally, hún er stálp. Hún er stálp. Hún er pínu lítil stálp. Hún er pínu lítil stálp. Ok. So, this is not so hard. It's just lítil, lítil, lítil. And this part that I've talked to, talked to you about now, this one part is all actually regular. So this is the regular part of the adjective. It's just that we have many, many adjectives with different kinds of regular uh, conjugation, but this is the regular part. But when you, you go to a plural, there are slight uh, irregularities uh, for the male plural and the female plural. So instead of just taking the root of the word and continuing, we have a sound change. So we say, þeir eru litlir. Þeir eru litlir. Notice that the e, one of the e is dropped, like according to traditions, there should be another e there. But, uh, and the e has turned into an e. The e has turned into an e, okay? The reason for this, I think, or is my educated guess, is just that this is so much easier to say than compared to have an extra e and then the lir and then have e there. It's 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 just if you say it many times fast, it will turn out to be little, little. I don't want to tell you the wrong version because I never want you to, to hear it because then you think it's the correct one. Then in the same way, once you learn this, in the same way, uh, thai, the female version is thair eru littler. Þær eru litlar. And notice that there's a slight click in the L still. Tlar, tlar, tlar. So þær eru litlar. Þeir eru litlir. Þær eru litlar. But then finally the neutral plural form is the same as the female uh, singular form like it always is. And þau eru lítil. Þau eru lítil. So the entire thing is hann er lítil. Hún er lítil, uh, það er lítið, hann er lítið, þeir eru litlir, þær eru litlar, en þau eru lítil. Ok, so then like before for the, for the plural part, if we have svo lítil, instead of just lítil, svo lítil, then you would say þeir eru, þær eru, and þau er. Ok, now I will get, say it. Þeir eru svo litlir. Þær eru svo litlar. En þau eru svo lítil. Ok, let's do it again with pínu lítil. I'm really, I'm drilling this into your brain because you need to know this because this is a super common word, like so common. So you should have it like at the tip of your mind, you should be able to say it without even thinking it. So let's do it again for pínu lítil, okay? And now let's do everything, everything with pínu lítil and see how well you do. Okay, the word is pínu lítil and you say, you, you say it first and I'll give you the solution. Hann er, okay? Hún er, það er, þeir eru, þær eru, og þau eru. And like always, if I'm going too fast, you can just rewind a little bit and do pauses so you have time to think if you need it. But now I'll give you the solution. The word is pínu lítil, and we say hann er pínu lítil, hún er pínu lítil, það er pínu lítið, þeir eru pínu litlir, þær eru pínu litlar, 
en þau eru pínu lítil. Notist the e at the plural male and female. Okay, so now we learned this word, very important. Okay, another very similar word is the word mekill, mekill. This is a word that doesn't have an exact equivalent of English, but it really means a large amount of something. So it can mean a big person. For example, mekill maður can mean both that he's maybe fat and tall, but mekill maður can also mean that he's a big personality in a good sense. So he's like a lot of goodness inside him. He has like, he has, he, he's above us all. He's like, there's a lot of man to him. Then it will look like this. Han er mikill maður. Then hún er mikill kona. Just like before, we just dropped the L. Nothing else happened. And, fin and finally, það er mikill barn. Which is a weird thing to say because normally uh, kids are small, so this sentence you usually wouldn't say it, but for grammatical purposes uh, we do it. Það er mikið barn. You wouldn't say it like this, but okay. But grammatically it's like this. Then we move on to the plural, and then we say þeir eru miklir menn. Þeir eru miklir menn. And notice that this is almost like the littler. The only thing is that when you have make it, there is no sound change. So really the only irregularity in the little is this sound change from E to E. But the make it is the same, but with that, without the sound change, it's just always E. So you say, þeir eru miklir menn. Þeir eru miklir menn. Þeir eru miklar konur. Þeir eru miklar konur. Og þau eru mikil börn, which is weird. Uh, we can say þau eru mikil kvár. Þau eru mikil kvár, which makes more sense because you wouldn't, even if the kid is pig, you would not use this word. You would use a different kind of word because mm, it sounds weird. So let's just talk about grown-ups with this word. Okay, so hann er mikil maður, hún er mikil kona, uh, hann er mikil kvár, uh, þeir eru miklir menn, þær eru miklar konur og þau eru mikil kvár. Okay, so easy enough, easy enough. But when adjectives do not end with an R and they don't end with a double L, they almost always end with a double N. Okay, double N. And there are two versions of this. First is, uh, there's only a few words like this, but they're quite common. And then is, for example, han er fit. Han er fit. So fit can both mean that he's like a nice person, han er fit gai, he's a nice guy, or that he's nicely dressed up, like he's fly, and he's always like with the most stylish clothes and this sort of thing, or just stylish in this particular occasion. So han er mjög fit. Like he has been dressed up in a really nice way. So we can say han er fit. And then we do exactly the same as before. The n is just dropped. And then we say hún er fín. Hún er fín. And remember the double n rules about the pronunciation. In the male form you have this k, you have this, you have this like nose n out of the side of your nose. Look up the episode for more hints about the pronunciation. You say han er fit. Han er fit, there's really Icelandic, out of the nose, n, but when there's only one n, this sound is dropped and it's just normal n. It's just, han er fit, hún er fín. Han er fit, hún er fín. And then fín becomes the uh, root of the word and then everything goes normally. So really like you would expect for the words that end with r. So you would say, han er fit. Hún er fín, það er fínt, þeir eru fínir, þær eru fínar og þau eru fín. So there's nothing strange about this, the only thing is that they end with a double N and then you take off one N, then you have the root of the word and everything is the same as before. Okay, so this is in principle not hard. Then there's one more variation and then I stop. Then I stop. I promise to stop, is that there's a really, really, really a lot, like really, really a lot of 
uh, adjectives that end with a double N but have an I in front of them. So, for example, sovin, sovin, okay? Uh, and the reason for why there are so many, okay, now I'm going to teach, tell you about grammar that you don't really need to know, so you can ignore me if you don't want to. But technically, for every verb, we have the adjective version of the verb. You can think, uh, technically, it's called Lisingerhaftu Thautidar, it does not matter at all. But it's really like if you change a verb into an adjective, okay? So it's so somehow both an adjective and a verb, but it's really used as an adjective. So for you, it doesn't really matter that it comes from a verb. But if you know Italian, it's a little bit similar to sono andata, sono andato, uh, no, or sono andati. Like the verb changes depending, the, suddenly it's a verb, but it does change depending to the gender, similar way that adjective does. Okay, so for example, the so suaven means slept. Okay, so you could say he is a well slept man or she is a well slept woman, something like this. So it's technically a verb, but you can use it as an adjective. Okay, but for you guys, it doesn't matter at all that this is whether it comes from a verb or whether it doesn't come from a verb. This does not matter at all to you. But I just wanted to tell you that this is the reason why we have so many uh, adjectives or adjectives that end with E and N. And sometimes these are just adjectives, not verbs. And you cannot really tell them apart. And honestly, you don't really care. So basically all the verbs that change into adjective, they either, or at least almost all, I think all that I remember at the moment, they either change in this uh, in form, like, Sova, ég er sovin, ég er vel út sovin. Or, for example, skýra, skýra, ég er skýrð, ég er skýrð. And I'm speaking in female form for both of them. But let's say for the dictionary form it would be, ég er skýrður, pretend I'm a guy right now, ég er skýrður, or ég er sovin. So these are the two different forms and each verb only takes one of these forms. And which one is very difficult for you to, <laughs> to know. It's just something that you will have to learn. But because of this issue, like a lot of the verbs are either turned into an ur adjectives, and then you can really not tell them away from any other ur adjectives and you don't care, or they're changed into this in adjectives and you cannot really uh, see them away from the other in adjectives and you don't care whether they originally come from verbs or not. It just really it doesn't matter for you. You just need to know how to use these words. Their origin doesn't really matter so much. Okay, so then you can have words like suaven or maybe use feimin, which is like a real uh, real adjective. It doesn't come from a verb, at least uh, not anyone that I know right now. And then we move along in a very similar way. So we say han er feimin. And can you guess what happens in the female form? Take a wild guess. So wild, yes, we drop one of the ends. So it becomes hun er feimin. Hun er feimin. Okay. Then in the neutral form, then it behaves the same way as li titl because li titl also had this e in front of the double l, and then the last letter is turned into an e, into an e, and you see feimin. Feimir. Hann er feimin, hún er feimin, uh, það er feimið, and then we continue in the same way as we did with lítill and mikill. We go, þeir eru feimnir, notice that there is no extra e, þeir eru feimnir, þær eru feimnar og þau eru feimin. Ok. So it seems like a lot, but this is really almost all of it. Let's say there's almost all of the main versions now that I've taught you, except for one, which is just a slight variation. At, uh, but let's now try it again for the word suavin. So the word suavin. So now try to do it by yourself. You would say han er, hún er, það er, þeir er. Þær eru og þau eru. Næko. Uh, hann er sofinn, hún er sofinn, það er sofið, þeir eru sofnir, 
þær eru sofnar og þau eru sofin. Ok? Ég náðu svo að segja hann er gefin, hún er gefin, það er gefið, þeir eru gefnir, það eru gefnar, þau eru gefin. It always goes the same, always goes the same, so it's not that hard. And there is almost all never any sound changes, at least not that I remember, so if I will remember I will correct myself, but, but this always goes in the same way. And this is typically very regular, so it's not a difficult thing to do. And notice the slight, mm, slightly Icelandic N com, comma, coming up in Gepnir. Gepnir. You cut the airflow. Gepnir. Gepnar. Sopnir. Sopnar. So it's like a slight, uh, this uh, no sound, but you cut the airflow. So you sepnir. Upnir. Upnir. So there's always this stop of the airflow, and then you let go. Like haldnir, 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 sopnir, sopnir. So it's not as brutal as the no sound, but there's this stop of airflow and then you let go. Haldnir, sopnir. I don't think it's too hard. I hope it's easy. I hope you can do it easily. Okay, so this is all for today. I hope it was not too much, but the good thing is this, that you have almost almost it's just like one slight variation which is only for like two or three words that i will talk about in the next uh, so i'll do one uh, i will do like a final color section and then i'll uh, add this one slight variation that is almost nothing so you have almost like almost learned <laughs> the first six variations of the adjectives for all the adjectives in Iceland, or like 90-95% of all the adjectives in Iceland. So just make sure that you know all of them. I will do one more lesson, just practicing the colors, just so you can get a little bit of practice. And then we know. Then we know the nominative <laughs> in all the versions. Nomin nominative, strong version, we know it. We finally know it. It's a big achievement, so yay for us. Yay! Do the homework, really, really do the homework, because this is important. What I taught you today is really important, even though it sounds technical and grammar and all of this, but you will use it so much, because it's like litet, it's such a common word, you cannot live without it. You really, you will end up speaking weird if you don't. And all these in adjectives, they're all around you. They're, you're surrounded by these adjectives that sometimes are verbs, but you don't really care. So you really should learn this and you should learn it quite uh, stringently so you're really secure and you can like ba, 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 ba. I'm so good at this. I don't even have any problems using adjectives in Iceland. I'm a fantastic person. I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. Okay, see you in the next lesson. Bless, bless. We will start easy, so please uh, connect together, take your time, press pause, and now I will give you the answer. Han er fullorðin. Fullorðin means grown up, meaning that he is an adult. Þeir eru fullorðnir. Hún er fullorðin. Þær eru fullorðnar. Hán er fullorðið. Og þau eru fullorðin. Now things become slightly trickier because you have to figure out the gender and whether it's a singular or plural by yourself. But it should still be fairly easy. So, but take your time, press pause and then I will give you the result. And as long as you're not on the bus or something, you're more than welcome to read with me. Number one, number eight. Stelpurnar eru litlar. Stelpurnar eru litlar. The girls are small. Númer 2. Kötturinn er lítill. Kötturinn er lítill. The cat is small. And number 3. Númer 3. Ása er lítill. Ása er <coughs> lítill. So I am small or what you would call short in in English because I'm only 160 which is very small for an Icelandic person. Númer fjögur, dátýrið er lítið. Dátýrið er lítið. The deer is small. Númer fimm, tjöldin eru lítil. 
tjöldin eru lítil, the tents are small, and finally, nummer 6, möjrarnir eru lítlir, möjrarnir eru lítlir, the ants are small. Ok, now use the word in the parenthesis in grey and fill it out in the sentences in the correct form. Press pause, take your time, write it down, and then I will give you the answer. Again, feel free to read with me. Börnin eru skrítin. Börnin eru skrítin. The children are weird. Number two. Grasið er grænt. Grasið er grænt. The grass is green. Number three. Þær eru ástfangnar. Þær eru ástfangnar. The woman or they, female, are in love. Number four. Mísnar eru pínulitlar. Mísnar eru pínulitlar. The mice are very small. Númer 5. Diskarnir eru brotnir. Diskarnir eru brotnir. The dishes are broken. The dishes are broken. Númer 6. And this is a tricky one, so I apologize in advance. So, uh, númer 6. Barnir er aleitt. Barnir er aleitt. So this is a bit of an exception because a is considered to be one vowel instead of just so it's not exactly in but it's a and then double n so we say barnet er alet barnet er alet which means the child is alone number 7 þeir eru dánir þeir eru dánir they male version the men are dead they are dead Númer 8. Þetta er sjúklega fyndið. Þetta er sjúklega fyndið. So þetta er, is a little bit like that or this. So it has the same uh, as the thaf and it always brings in the neutral form. And then finally, númer 9. Íslenska er svolítið flókin. Íslenska er svolítið flókin. Meaning Icelandic is a little bit complicated, just a little tiny bit. For the last exercise of today, make three sentences with some of the words listed here. Lítill, svolítill, pínulítill, mikill, fíp, fyndin, feimin, ástfangin, grætt, fullorðin, or any of your favorite words uh, that end with a double consonant. You can make these sentences for yourself, just write them down on a piece of paper, or you can leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for sticking with this long but very important lesson. Until next time, uh, bless bless!